Hello, my name is Blake, and last month I sold $4,308 of used DVDs. How the hell did I do that? Well, in this video, I'm going to teach you. And before you click off and say, what kind of bullshit is this? It's not bullshit. It's real. And I'm not putting you on the hook for a $2,000 mentorship course like all those other assholes you're going to see. I'm going to give you the info how to get ungated for the category of DVDs. I'm going to tell you the processes I use. I'm going to say where you can buy liquidation pallets from. Everything is going to be in this video. So sit down, calm yourself, take some notes, and let's make some money together. But first things first, I have to prove to you it's a good idea. You're probably thinking Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, Amazon Prime, Crunchyroll, other weird stuff I don't know about. They're all streaming websites. How can DVD sales possibly compete? And the answer is simple. We're not selling the titles that are streaming. There are hundreds of thousands of DVDs that have been made hundreds of thousands and a fraction of that are streaming online and the ones that are streaming online are not perpetually streaming online friends for example friends just got taken off netflix and you know what happened to the dvd price boop it went up that's supply and demand baby we are finding the supply of things in demand that are not streaming that's how you make money doing this kind of thing so we know it's a good idea. We know what we're doing here. How do we get the DVDs? I'm going to go over sources from the bottom source to the highest source. The highest source is the wholesalers. When you make a wholesale purchase and show your invoice to Amazon, they give you permission to sell DVDs. There is a huge problem with DVDs that are not real. They're fake, they're counterfeit, they're bootleg, they're fraud, whatever it is. Just go on eBay, check a, a new release DVD title, see who the seller is, and if it's going for a third of the actual retail price, it's probably a bootleg and they just don't take it down. I don't know why. You can't pull that shit on Amazon. They want to see um, the provenance of a DVD. They want to see where it came from. So when I tell you the name of that supplier, buy from them, show Amazon your invoice, and uh, you will get ungated. But don't just click off the video then because there's more info you got to watch. Okay, that being said, we're going to start at the bottom. The bottom, where is the bottom place to get DVDs from? And that is your own home collection. You can sell your own DVDs, but that's not really making money. So what else is there? Okay, well, there's also garage sales. There's also thrift stores. Those are two great places to buy DVDs. There are library sales. There are media sales. You can buy all of these DVDs and sell them on eBay, on Amazon. Now, what is the difference, though, between eBay and Amazon? eBay, uh, I'm going to lump all non-Amazon platforms like Etsy, Mercari, Depop, Discogs, whatever, in the non-Amazon category because they're more or less the same. Now, there are different demographics who shop on each of those sites, so you're going to have a better time selling a lot of 15 Door the Explorer DVDs on Mercari than you would Etsy, for example. But the idea of holding a product and then shipping it out when the sale occurs, that is the same across all these platforms. We're on Amazon. There's Amazon FBA, which is slightly different, and I'm going to explain after I explain these. Let's use sourcing for DVDs at a thrift store for sale on eBay as the first example. So how do you do this? Well, what you're going to need is a phone, an eBay account, uh, the packing supplies, obviously, and internet connection, data. Because you're going to these stores, you're finding the DVDs, you are using the eBay app, which is free to use, to scan the barcode, or just put in the title, or take a picture of the cover. Any of those things are going to do this. What we're trying to do, what our intention is, is to see if this specific title has sold before and how much it sold for. You're going to go to completed listings, and I have a video on this, so when this one's over, go to my channel and search in eBay sold listings, and I'll show you how to do that. It's like a two-minute video. You see, let's say, for example, we have The Prettiest Mermaid is our DVD, and um, we search it, and we see that five have sold in the past month for $19. And then we see that everyone that has been listed for at least $19 has sold. And then any of them that have been listed for more than $19 have not sold. So what that can tell us is, is that we will make $19 revenue off this sale. Now after that occurs, there's also the eBay fees, there's the shipping fees, there's the cost of the purchase. So you take all those and you minus them off of your purchase price and that's your profit. That might seem like a, uh, something a child could do, so simple. But it's the kind of the kind of obstacle, just understanding that, that so many people are letting stop them from making more money. 
So you go into the thrift store, you find the DVD, you scan the barcode, you put the title and take a picture of it, any of those things, it brings up how many there are, and then you see what they're selling for. And then you list it, you take a picture of it. It's very, very easy. And if someone wants it, you ship it to them. Now, when you mail it to them, what are the steps? You put it in a bag and you buy postage. They're gonna be shipping media mail. Pretty much every DVD I can think of goes media mail. And so you're paying about $2.80 plus the cost of the package, whatever it is. Now, there are a lot of you who are saying, what about gas? What about the cost of this? What about the cost of that? If you cannot afford to drive to a thrift store, you shouldn't be doing this. Does that make sense to you? If you're so concerned with these marginal fees, you should not be trying to run your own business. It's not how it works. If you have the flexibility to invest $100, which is not a lot of money, then yes, you can start this off. But I don't want to see the comments be littered with questions that um, are only meant to make it appear as if you can't do this. I only want questions and comments that have the intention of learning more about it. Does that make sense to you guys? I think I think it does. That's eBay, but what about Amazon? I personally am an Amazon FBA seller. Now it's the same conceptual process where I'm trying to see how much they go for on the platform versus how much I'm gonna pay for it minus the, the fees. And the fees for Amazon FBA are much, much higher. But they're higher because they store the items for you. They ship the items for you and they handle all of the customer service which helps you free up time to source more DVDs. Now instead of the eBay app, you're going to use the Amazon seller app which is a free app for any Amazon seller that shows you their entire inventory and it'll break down the fees and your estimated profit or you can use a third party app like Profit Bandit, they're like 10 bucks a month. I use that. I have no affiliate code, but I like them so you can use them too. And what we're doing there again is scanning the barcode, seeing how much we're gonna make after all the fees. A lot of people who are new get caught up on the immense fees you're gonna see. Sometimes on a $7 DVD, you're paying 80% fees. But that's because the cost of shipping and storing is built into that. If you were to do the same thing on Amazon, take into account the cost of shipping as a fee, a lot of these cheap $5 DVDs are gonna be making a 5% profit too. It's, it's as opposed to a, you know what we think of as a 70% profit if you're not taking into account uh, the cost of shipping. So we're not gonna look on the fees. We're not gonna get fixated on the fees. That's the thing a lot of naysayers do. They say, I can't do this. The fees are too high. We don't care about the fees. We really don't. No one got rich by cutting back on their fees. They got rich by making more profit. So if we're paying more fees, but still getting more profit, that would be the most beneficial course of action to pursue, would it not? Okay, now we're getting a bit more nuance though, right? So there's Amazon FBA. That's where they store it, they ship it out. There's also Amazon FBM, where you store it and you ship it out. This is similar to the process of selling a DVD on eBay or any other of those platforms where you make a listing. However, on Amazon, they have the listings already pre-made for most of the DVDs you're going to encounter. And you add yourself as a seller onto that listing. Whether it's FBA or FBM, you're gonna do that either way. But here is where FBM differs. You really have to be, you really have to be on uh, your condition game. A lot, a lot, you have to be more concerned about it. On Amazon FBA, you are a prime seller. You are much more likely to get the buy box and the buyer is not as likely to see what the condition is of the item. Uh, and so it's not really gonna matter. Whereas with FBM sellers, you're not gonna get the buy box, it isn't as likely at least, and so the customer who's buying from you is going into the uh, additional listings tab and going to the cheapest one and buying that. So here's one bad thing, they're picky buyers. Picky buyers suck. Here's two bad things, they're looking at your condition. If you say it's like new and they think it's very good, they're gonna return it. Whereas with FBA sellers, because you're competing for the buy box, the condition is not as important. This is kind of a complicated thing, and if you don't understand how the buy box works, I have a video on it on my channel. It's free. All the stuff I give you is free. Watch it. You'll learn something.
I think I've done a good job explaining how these platforms like eBay, Amazon, Etsy work, whether you're selling it FBA or whether you're fulfilling it as a merchant, but there's more to it than that though. What happens between selling it and buying it? You have to prep the items in a, a multitude of ways and now I'm going to explain those to you. So really you're going to be working with uh, three things. So you're going to have your disc refinisher. I have a JFJ Easy Pro. They're like 80 bucks on eBay. And what they do is they sand down the bottom of the disc and make it shiny again. You're going to have to have one of those. You're going to want to have a, a cache of jewel cases that you can put the discs in if their existing case is broken or even better, replacement DVD cases that you can transfer the front cover art or the inner manual into. So you want to make these appear as if they are newer than they really are because what the customer cares about is not how they were when you found them they care how they are when you sell them so you get your dvds you test them all and the ones that don't play or even the ones that do play if you're being really particular you take back to your machine and you sand down the bottom i have a video on how to do this it's how to use a jfj easy pro it's really simple it can be kind of messy but if you're selling dvds i cannot stress enough or video games or cds any disc media, I cannot stress enough how important it is to refinish the surfaces uh, and then test them again. Because if they don't work, giving this bad feedback on your accounts on eBay and Amazon, it, it can suspend you. If you have a 5% defect rate because you didn't refinish your discs, because you just scanned the barcodes and sent them in, you're going to get your account banned. Don't do that. It's a bad idea. So besides refinishing the discs, putting them in new jewel cases or whatever. What I like to do, I put a rubber band around the exterior of the case. That just ensures it's not going to open up and fall out. So we have that done. We have our discs ready to get sh uh, sold or sent in. Now what I do for Amazon FBA is I scan them into the FBA system using a, uh, a program called Inventory Lab. It's like 50 bucks a month. I'll put a link below. But you don't have to do that. You can do it on FBA, and Amazon FBA to use if you are a seller is free. There's no additional cost to use the product. And guess what? I have a video on that too. Just type in WBK's first FBA shipment, and it will show you the step-by-step -step screen share process. And what you're doing with this, if you're an FBA seller, is you are logging in your inventory into Amazon's system. They are giving your inventory a unique FN SKU number, and and you put that on a sticker and the sticker goes over the barcode and that's how Amazon checks them in. You have to buy a printer obviously. It can be a thermal printer. I use a Dymo 450 or it can be an ink printer. I use a uh, Epson EcoTank 2550 I think is what it is. Uh, with the ink printer you have to buy 30 up address label slips. It prints off on those. For a thermal printer you buy uh, the individual address slip uh, I think they're like an inch by three and a half inches. I don't even know how big they are, but they print off an additional barcode that goes over the existing barcode because when Amazon gets those, they're going to scan that and you don't want them scanning the original barcode because to them, that is a nonsense number. They only care about the number they gave you, the barcode they gave you. And that's why you put it over the original barcode. That's called your FN SKU, and it is unique to you as a seller. So when your listing sells on Amazon, when you say, let's say you have a DVD, uh, Prettiest Mermaids, six, and uh, you have it for $89, and someone buys it, Amazon understands that the $89 Prettiest Mermaid six is FN SKU, da 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 it's an alphanumeric sequence. They go to their enormous warehouses, they pick it out of their shelves, and they send your product to the customer. That is the life cycle of any Amazon FBA product being stored at a fulfillment center. It's kind of complicated, but again, if you watch these videos I've put out for free, you will learn that you can become an expert. Hey, one quick thing. So when I said you put them in a plastic bag, I'm in a plastic bag like this. It's a poly mailer. Amazon sells them for dirt cheap. I didn't mean like some Kroger grocery store bag. Okay, but beyond all this stuff, let's talk about liquidation now because you've, let's say you're in an area of the country where there's not good thrift stores and you can't find DVDs there. 
Or let's say you are so, so aggressive in your sourcing that you've exhausted the supply of DVDs at thrift stores and you want more. Go to bstocksupply.com, make an account, and bid on pallets of DVDs. You can buy bulk liquidation DVDs there. Again, this is information that the other people you might see on YouTube charge hundreds or thousands of dollars for. And I give to you because I know you deserve it. So when you're going there on bstocksupply.com, what you want to do is make sure you're not paying more than about 10 cents per DVD. That's about the going rate. And in a pallet of DVDs where they're nightly, ne neatly and nicely stacked, that's going to be between about 2,000, we'll say 2,000 plus or minus 150. If they're just dumped in there like a dump truck, backed up and made them all fall in, you're looking at like maybe 1,200 to 1,500. And in addition to that, they are much more likely to be broken if they're just dumped in there. So when I buy pallets of DVDs, I prefer to buy the neatly, nicely stacked ones, not the, uh, the dump trucks because I'm not here to waste my time. Now on these pallets, you can generally expect, uh, I would say about $2,000 back off of them. And that's going to differ obviously by how savvy you are of a seller, how many of your duds you can move, how many lots you can sell and maybe that kind of stuff. Uh, what you really want to do is not take my word for it, but keep track of your own pallets. Uh, I've got sheets that I have for download on my Gumroad link below. And it shows you how I track my pallets. And it's not rocket science. It's a spreadsheet. It's pallet A. Estimated profit. Actual profit. It's that simple. It's really easy. Uh, there's more steps to it. I mean, for example, you have to use uh, a system like Inventory Lab to, uh, to mark specific inventory uh, to associate it with a certain pallet. But the concepts are not difficult. It's just keeping track of your progress. That's really what all this comes down to. What separates the DVD sellers making 40 grand a year from those who are making, you know, 100 grand a year plus is that they track their progress and they optimize their processes to, uh, well, in this case, to optimize profit, you know, time and profit. Now it's time for the most exciting part of the video, the wholesale invoices. Here is how you get ungated for DVDs on Amazon. You go to AENT.com and you buy them. But there's so much more. There's so much more. So how do you ensure that your invoices are kosher? Because you can't just send any invoice, right? Can you? Uh, Amazon seller support, they're kind of uh, not the best. They're not native English speakers. They don't really understand things oftentimes. I mean, anybody who's dealt with them knows that they're idiots sometimes. So how do you deal with idiots? You make things as simple as possible and you give yourself a lot of, t a lot of options. <laughs> so what you're going to do is the AENT has a $1,000 minimum. Just as a side note, maybe that means you should make a thousand bucks in eBay first or a thousand bucks selling used books first, but I don't know. It's your business. So a thousand dollar minimum order. What you're going to want to do is get as many, uh, titles as you can in multiples of 10 because 10 is going to be the requirement for Amazon. They're going to say, please show us an invoice with 10 units purchased. Da, 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 da. I mean, obviously check your own individual application page first to see what the specific requirements are. But for most sellers, it's going to be 10 copies per title. So you're going to go through their catalog online and you're going to do the same thing you did in thrift stores, taking the price, minusing out the fees, all that stuff, seeing if there's a profit and you're going to buy copies of those DVDs in multiples of 10. Pretty as mermaid six, pretty as mermaid seven, pretty as mermaid eight, pretty as mermaid nine, buy 10 copies of each. Why do you do this? Because you can reuse the invoice then. You, if, if you get some, some doofus who can't understand you, who denies you just by default, you can try again with the next title. Now, when you are applying, make sure you have a few things uh, done correctly. So the invoice address from AENT has to match the address on your seller account. That's very important. That's how they know it's you. Also, what I would recommend doing is blacking out all the information that's not the address, that's not AENT.com, that isn't their address uh, or the price you paid for it. Because anything that might confuse them is only going to harm your chances. So black out everything except the one line that says UPC code, whatever it is, 
Prettiest Mermaid 6, 10 units, and then you can black out the price you paid for it. That is the best way to do it, and I've talked to people who do that and still get denied, but I don't know a single person who has done that more than three or four times and still been denied. Now, there are some folks who give up after the second denial, but what do they deserve? You know, nothing really. They didn't trust the process. Now, are there other wholesalers? Absolutely there are, and here is my pitch to you. So I've given you all this free information, right? Was it... Do you like it? Was it good? Do you want more information on this? Because if you do, I have a, an ebook. It's gumroad.com slash WBK, how to sell DVDs. And it's about 8,000 words, I think. Uh, I have a list of other liquidators. I have a list of other suppliers. It's all information that will help you grow your business. But there's nothing in there that I have withheld from this video. No aspects uh, of doing this that I've withheld. Now, there might be more of like my worksheets I use, or there might be more information, but the essentials, the basics, that's all here. So if you can't afford it, that's okay. Rewatch the video. I am not trying to say, hey, you'll make a thousand bucks, but only if you pay me, because that is a shitty thing to do. If you're the kind of person who says, hey, I will help you make money, but only if you pay me. Oh, what are you doing? You know, are you trying to help people? Or are you trying to, uh, you know, uh, capitalize on their hopes and dreams? And if you are, whatever. That's your prerogative. But my intention is to help people. I like making money too, but I'm not going to withhold basic information from you on the pretenses that I must be paid for it. Again, that's gumroad.com slash WBK. I think it's a great book. I think it's the kind of thing that once you get a hold of this and you want to grow your business up, it'd be very useful. Um, I, as you can tell, it's like a 25 minute video, so I can be kind of, I can be kind of long, long worded, long winded, but I think everything makes sense. I think everything is important to know. And so again, if you want to support the channel, if you appreciate this, buy the ebook. And if you can't, but you still want to support the channel, just give the video a thumbs up, you know, just subscribe, just hit the bell for notifications, just share the video. All that stuff helps me help more people. And that's my intention. You know, that's my intention with these videos. I'll see you guys later. And, uh, don't be a shithead.